Hey folks, it's Ray, DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got your complete in-depth review of the Suunto 7. Been using it a couple weeks now, got a pretty good feel for where it's good, where it's not so good, where it needs a lot of love, all that kind of stuff. Uh, mostly from a sport and fitness standpoint. After all, if you're buying a Suunto watch, you're likely buying it for the outdoors. You're buying it for fitness, you're buying it for sport. Whatever it may be, it's probably sporty. Um, now, of course, you could just buy it as a Wear OS watch, and, and that's fine. And that probably gets to like, to ruining my entire video in the next 10 seconds. Uh, but I would say this is, without a question, the best smartwatch that Suunto has ever made. Unfortunately, it's also the worst sports watch Suunto has ever made, at least in the last decade or so. And maybe they've done stuff that's worse before then, but if I look at the last decade's worth of Suunto watches, uh, this is unquestionably the worst sport watch they've made, yet it's the best smartwatch they've made. So let's kind of dive into that a lot, a lot of detail. Um, also, I've got an entire init written review up there in the corner where I go into much more detail, especially around the accuracy bits. I'm gonna talk about that later on in this video, but if you want like all the nitty gritty data, it's up there as well. So as I mentioned, it is a Wear OS watch. You probably already know that, of course. Uh, and right now I've got configured for the always on display uh, with always on turned always on. Uh, and that's not the default. The default is to have it always off, but for this video, in order so it's not turning on and off constantly, I've switched it to always on. And that's what you see right there, that default um, always on display where there's not the heat map in the background. And when you go ahead and wake that watch face up, when you turn your wrist like this, and this here is Suunto's heat map watch face. And honestly, this is my favorite part of the watch. This is by far the best watch face on any sports watch, any smart watch, anything ever. Suunto should win an award for just the watch face itself. Ignore the rest of the watch, the watch face. I want to like buy that and put that on other watches because it's awesome. Uh, and let's just dive right into the, how that works. So you can go ahead and hold down and change the watch face like that. A uh, little settings icon at the bottom there. And what's cool about this is you can change that heat map. Uh, so that heat map showing you activity around you, but it's showing you a certain type of activity. So you can see right now, it's showing me the running activities around me. I do trail running, cycling, all trails, mountaineering. I can go down to like cross country skiing, which is great because I head to Chamonix tomorrow. So to be able to find like ski trails around that, that's good. It shows you all that stuff just around you and it's based on your current GPS location. So you can go ahead and you can see what's around you there, but you can also change the zoom level as well. So right now it's showing me a city, uh, five miles around me, but I can go up to you know 10 miles and so on. If you're a metric, it would show you metric as opposed to miles. But in my case, I'm Americana, so we're just gonna go with, with miles. Uh, it's super, super cool. On the other side is battery. And that's one of the challenges with this watch. And so Suunto advertises two full days of battery life not a chance in hell. So I've been using it in the stock configuration. So the default configuration, which gets you basically the screen is always off all the time until you raise your wrist and about between 1.5 and 2.5 seconds later, the screen turns on and you can see the time and then a couple seconds later it turns off. Uh, and in that configuration, I have consistently got between 20 and 28 hours of battery life on this watch. So I turned off the display at night when I went to bed manually, I turned off notifications. So it had that, you know, eight or so hours of rough time there. Uh, where I can go ahead and uh, be saving battery. Uh, but still, again, 20 to 28 hours is consistently what I've got. Um, I will note though, if you turn on the always on display, it burns battery like a banshee. And that matches what I saw outside as well. So in workout mode, if I turn on the always on display just for workouts, you have to toggle it each time, uh, that'll go ahead and it'll keep the screen on the entire time, which is great, super useful for workouts, especially in my case, I was riding outdoors today. So in that case, I went from 100% battery. I literally took the watch off the charger, went out the door riding, and when I got back, 75 minutes later, it was at 60%. So I burned through 40% battery uh, in a 75 minute ride with GPS, optical heart rate, and always on. So battery isn't your friend. It's, it's Wear OS. That's that's the norm for Wear OS. They're, they're known for that reason. They're known for having poor battery life. And this watch exemplifies that perfectly. So let's talk about some more general Wear OS type stuff. Uh, one is upper left hand corner here is where you can go ahead and access the apps menu. So you can see apps there. I can go into the Google Play Store, for example. Um, I can add other apps. Uh, so I was down earlier in the fitness apps there, but you can see recommended for you. I can go to fitness, uh, for example. I can install apps. Uh, so that's apps in a nutshell. I can swipe up from the bottom right here and I will go ahead and I'll see my notifications. So you can see the Strava notification. And in this case, I've got it compared to my iPhone over here. Uh, now, some of you are like, whoa, why are you doing Wear OS to iPhone? Why not? It's it's supported. It's been supported for a couple of years now, at least. Uh, and that's one of the strengths of Wear OS over Apple's Watch OS. And that, you know, with an Apple Watch, you have to have an iPhone. Now, there are differences in the way it works with different platforms. Uh, so for the most part, I get most of the features with the iPhone, but I don't get the ability to respond to text messages, for example. I would get a text message in, I can just see the text, but I can't respond to it. And that is actually 
Apple's fault, not Wear OS's or Shinto's fault. Uh, Apple locks that down for third parties and does not allow third parties to respond to text messages. If I swipe down from the top there, I've got basically basic controls. So, um, for example, every night I turn on Do Not Disturb and I turn off the watch face, which means that as I raise it or lower or whatnot uh, in the bed, it doesn't turn on and have this bright flashlight like thing. To enable that in the morning, I just simply tap it like this and then I turn off Do Not Disturb, and I'm good to go. Oh, and hey, a quick note, if you're finding this video useful or interesting or whatever the case may be, go ahead and like that like button right now. It really helps out the video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about music real quick here before we get into the full sports side of stuff. Uh, so any Bluetooth headphones, you can pair up to it, and there are storage on board. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, Google Play Music app right there in order to control my music. Uh, in this case, what I can do, if I swipe back here, I can go into Music for Fitness here, I can choose, uh, yes, the battery's low, I don't care. Um, and I gotta choose some sort of audio device. Now, there is no speaker on this except for a little beeper that can beep things, but it can't uh, you know, play like music out from the speaker. So you gotta go ahead and connect to a pair of headphones. Uh, so I'm gonna connect to these right here, see if it connects them, no problem. Uh, and so I've used mostly the Power Beats, no issues with that from a connectivity standpoint. You see it's connected up. So you can go in different categories, for example, uh, music for fitness right there. It'll have roughly three different playlists that it comes up with. Uh, none of the three are fitness related at all. Earlier I got a gospel one that recommended it and I've got a uh, like songs for prayer and all sorts of random things. Now I've got no items available. Um, kind of the general theory there. But in any case, I downloaded like a popular playlist just to better get it on here. Uh, and if I tap this here, you can see it's already playing out of these right now. I can go ahead and I can change the volume right there. If I put this up here, uh, you can probably hear it's next to the microphone a little bit there. There we go, maybe this one. Any case, uh, I can pause it, I can skip tracks. I can also play music over Wi-Fi. So if I've got uh, Wi-Fi connectivity, I can do that. And I can also play it via Bluetooth Smart from my phone as well. There are other third-party apps, for example, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio. In the case of Spotify, there's no downloading of Spotify music to the watch itself. Uh, that's just controlling your phone. So just keep that in mind. In terms of playing music during a workout, you basically just use that same Google Music, uh, Play Music menu there, uh, and then you go to whatever app you want to, in this case, my workout app, and that's still playing in the background right here. And I can start my workout like normal. I can switch back and forth between the apps. Uh, that all works kind of as you'd expect. Now, the last thing before we start talking pure sports is the fitness side of it. Uh, and this is where we start to skew away from a past Sunto devices. Uh, so, you know, historically, if I take something like the Sunto 9 here or the Sunto 3, uh, by the way, for size comparisons, I know these aren't powered on, but you can see, um, you know, it's not that much smaller than a Sunto 9, definitely bigger than a Sunto 3, uh, but there's that like characteristic Sunto styling of the bezel and whatnot, uh, but I think that just looks stunning, like by far better than uh, any other Wear OS device out there. Uh, but with Wear OS becomes the Google Fit platform for underlying activity tracking. Now, historically, as I was saying, Sunto takes care of that themselves. They take care of step tracking and sleep tracking and all that kind of stuff. But with Wear OS, they've offloaded that to Sunto. Uh, so in this case, I can go up here and tap the left-hand corner, uh, tap again, and I go to Google Fit and I can see my steps for the day, my distance for the day, my heart rate for the day. Uh, so there's kind of like this summary of that and a little dashboardy sort of thing. I click on steps right there and I can see my total steps. Uh, I can swipe down, I can see for the last couple of days there. Uh, heart rate sucks. Uh, so heart rate on Wear OS on this watch, this platform is only done once every 15 minutes. Uh, for comparison, every other watch in the industry for years does every one second uh, recording uh, or at least sampling at one second and sometimes they they filter to a higher up level but either way it's every 15 minutes that is if you do the math on that that's one nine hundredth the level of uh, 24 by 7 heart rate recording than everyone else out there that little chunk right there where you see more frequent recording is when i was in the workout because then it records at one second intervals like a proper watch should um, so the, the challenge with the heart rate though on the back is that this sensor is, it's not ideal. We'll get to that in just a second though. So let's not get too far ahead of the game there. Uh, but the more interesting thing here is that while the steps and the distance and all that are shown there, they're not shown in the app. So if I look in the Sunto app, for example, uh, and if I go here on steps, you'll see there is no step data. There's no calorie data. There's no sleep data. 
Uh, there's no fitness level data. Like, so what we're seeing here is four fifths of the Suunto app is useless with the Suunto 7 because they don't pull that data in from Google Fit. Anyways, we're not gonna get too distracted by that right now. Uh, it is what it is. So let's talk about the Suunto app itself. Uh, so this is the part where you go from Wear OS into the Suunto ecosystem, if you will. Uh, and the way you do that is tap this upper right hand button right there, and that will go ahead and open up the Suunto app. Uh, so the Suunto app is where you do your workouts. Uh, so if I swipe up like that, you can see that I've got the start button there. I can go ahead and choose the particular sport that I want. Uh, and this is where Suunto excels in that they have a boatload of sports. I think it's like 70 or 80 sports. Uh, you can see as I scroll through here, um, there's a lot of sports, like anything you want, anything you think of. In this case, for example, if you're out running, it's gonna show running in pace, you know, so minutes a mile uh, versus if you're out cycling, it'll show it in speed, miles per hour or uh, kilometers per hour. Uh, so just kind of make making it contextually more appropriate. So in that case, I'm gonna choose running. For exercise options here, uh, there's only two. It's tones and vibrations, which then goes to yes or no for those, and then keep screen on. You have to turn this on every single time you start a workout. So uh, it turns itself off each time, which is kind of a pain in the ass, uh, but that just keeps the screen on so you don't have this delay. Because otherwise you're running along and you gotta wait one for the screen to turn on, and then from there you have to wait another like half a second to a second uh, for Suunto to fill the data. Next is map options. This is where you can change the downloaded map uh, and what type of map you wanna see. Uh, so you can see the map style there. There is, oops, sorry. Uh, there's outdoor, there is winter. Uh, and then if I can go down below, you see the different heat maps there, running, cycling, et cetera. Uh, those are all available. And then you go back here and I can choose uh, what area to download as my map. And I can zoom in and out and get, not like the entire country, but I can get roughly, you know, as far as I would reasonably pedal on my bike uh, in a giant circle anyways, not one way. It doesn't quite go that far uh, downloaded here. It is super cumbersome though. So the way you have to download of these is you pick the area you want like this uh, and then you go ahead and you take the cable and you plug it in and then you wait and hope that Wi-Fi does something no, it doesn't usually work that well. Like that that sounds great in theory, um, it still sounds clumsy, but it sounds great. And in reality, I've found that it just doesn't always work that well. Like a lot of times I'll plug it in, I'll wait, nothing will happen. It thinks, it says it's pending. It's just it's just a mess. So back up to the top here, I would just swipe this at this point in time uh, and that's starting my workout. Now you have these data pages here, uh, but you are not allowed to customize these in any way, shape or form. You're not allowed to add data pages or move data pages, tweak the data pages. What you've got is what you got. This is not Burger King. Uh, so you can see I can swipe to the right once and I get a lap data page and I can swipe again and I get the map data page and I can swipe again and that's that's it. That, that's it folks, that's all we got. Um, and so on these here, you get pace, you get distance, all the kind of normal stuff that you'll get. And then depending on the sport, it'll automatically create laps at preset intervals. When I'm done, I click the stop button right there. I can click end uh, and it'll give me a summary of that workout. And I'll show you here my cycling workout from just a little bit ago. Uh, so an hour and 17 minutes, uh, 21 miles. You can see the speed there along with kind of the speed uh, graph over the top of it, the auto lapse that triggered every, in this case, every five miles uh, and go back here my heart rate, heart rate graph, heart rate zones, calories, altitude. You might think this is incorrect, but it's not. I live in the Netherlands, and so I actually am below sea level for the vast majority of this ride here. And then down here, you can see my ascent and descent. Those are just highway overpasses. Uh, and then my recovery time, PTE and EPOC. Uh, now these last three here are you know, recovery and load metrics. In other words, how much did you work on this particular workout uh, and what's the recovery time gonna be? The challenge though is I can't see those metrics anywhere else. Just there, just here and on the workout summary screen in the app, but I don't get those plotted anywhere. Like all the, again, the benefits of having Suunto as an ecosystem, as a platform, are lost. Like it just, there's no cohesion between this app and the rest of the entire Suunto platform. Okay, next we're gonna talk accuracy. Not so much the 24 by seven heart rate accuracy, uh, but instead the workout accuracy. Uh, so in this case, I've got a bunch of different workouts I've done. I've got indoor cycling, outdoor cycling, indoor running, outdoor running, all sorts of things that we're gonna talk about. But we're gonna start off with today's outdoor ride as a good starting point for this uh, and kind of walk through that. Uh, so look at this, this ride here today uh, and you'll see that it was wrong like almost the entire time and not just a little bit wrong not like sometimes you get things that are a little bit wrong where the sensor you know drops out briefly or has issues with certain areas of a roadway or whatever the case was no this was just wrong wrong across the board uh and i'm not even gonna bother to like analyze this particular workout in more detail because it's just horribly wrong. Next, we'll look at an interval workout I did yesterday. Uh, and you'll see in this case, this is a running outdoors uh, track workout. Uh, and you'll see that the warm up period was 
completely wrong. I uh, just missed the boat entirely, which is a pattern that I've seen over and over again with the Cinto 7. It really struggles in those first like five to 10 minutes to get a heart rate lock. Even when I give it all the time in the world, I wait for it, I give it an extra minute or two of standing there still, making sure it's got heart rate, all the proper things you should do in a perfect case, and it just, it can't lock. Uh, and then it gets it for a while. As I continue my warm up and start in the first couple intervals, it's not horrible, but you just see a lot of times it just drops off. Like it just completely misses the boat on some of these intervals entirely. Uh, so does the whip strap. So it, like, it's not just necessarily Sunto, uh, but this is by far the least accurate optical heart rate sensor I've tested in years. Like I can't remember the last time I tested something this inaccurate. Uh, and the same pattern holds true for workout after workout after workout. Uh, no matter what I look at, whether it's an indoor workout or another outdoor run, uh, the accuracy is just not there. Next, let's go ahead and look at the GPS accuracy of the Cinto 7. For the most part in running, it seems to be in the general ballpark. I do find that has issues around tall buildings, for example. Uh, cycling wise, no real issues either at speed, road cycling. I haven't tried mountain biking with it though yet, where most GPS units tend to struggle a little bit. Uh, but again, road riding fine, uh, both commuting around town uh, fine. So with that, let's talk about kind of my final thoughts on this thing. If I look at the capabilities of this watch, it is roughly, I'm using that in the most generous way possible, um, in the same ballpark as something like the Garmin Venue or the Apple Watch uh, Series 3, more than 4 or 5. Uh, and in that case, those watches are priced $199 for the Apple Watch Series 3 and then $299 for the Garmin Venue these days. Uh, Fitbit's watches that are in this equivalent ballpark, something like the Ionic uh, is roughly between 200 and 250 bucks. This thing sits at 499 bucks. And I could sort of accept that if I had all the sport functionality of something like the Sunto 9 in here. Like if you had all this functionality baked in that little Sunto app with customizable sport modes and all that kind of stuff, I'd be down for that. I would, I would agree 499 is appropriate. But you don't. You don't even have the functionality of the Sunto 3 in this watch. Like this is what, a $200 watch? Um, and it's not in this thing. Which reminds me that you can't pair sensors either. So for example, I can't take this chest strap to make up for the crappy optical heart rate sensor in there and pair it to the Sunto app at all. Uh, that's something that Sunto says they wanna leave for product differentiation to their higher end units. Um, so that's weird. Uh, mind you, Sunto's $279 to $329 units paired to chest straps and cadence sensors and power meters and all that stuff just fine. So what logic is that? Um, so I don't, uh, this just frustrates me. It frustrates me because Sunto had the potential here to kick this out of the park. They could have gone to Wear OS and be like, you know what, we'll own the crappy battery life, but we're gonna rock this thing with an amazing app that has all the functionality of this. So the people that wanted to sit there and go, you know what, if I want a great sport watch on Wear OS that looks pretty, this would be it. But it's not, it's a half-baked piece of, Anyways, I probably should stop. Anyways, if you found this useful or interesting or whatever the case may be, go ahead and lock that like button down at the bottom there um, or hit the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology stuff in the future. Have a good one.